Well, I guess we will go ahead and, uh, and get started here at high noon. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. So glad you guys could join us today for our little lunch lecture uh, here on Friday, July the 9th. Um, uh, so just so glad you guys got, came here to join us, as, as Laura mentioned. You know, we've not been doing these for a while, so we're glad to have a good crowd here to hear about the great things going up. Uh, my name is Van Pearsall. I am the Director of Development for the Coastal Land Trust, and I'll be your host today. First, we'll start off with a couple of announcements. Um, we're gonna be, we are recording the lecture. Uh, we're also showing it on Facebook Live today, so feel free to turn off your camera if you just want to sit back and, and enjoy and not be seen. Um, there's going to be some links in the chat. Laura's going to drop some stuff in there for you to I uh, invite you to give support for the Coastal Land Trust with a donation, especially if you've been in lunch lectures. And as Laura mentioned, let us know uh, if you enjoy them and how you would like to see them. We're looking to, to uh, start back up in the fall, but we want to make sure that it's at a pace that's good for you and for our audience uh, out there on the internet. Uh, and then finally, we're going to keep everybody on mute during the talk. Um, we'll have some, some casual kind of questions and answers, but if you have a question about the slide, feel free to come off and ask. Otherwise, we're going to leave some time at the very end uh, so we can do some questions and answers. So we are so excited to welcome back our Director of Land Protection, Janice Allen, to give us a sneak peek at some of our upcoming projects. Janice joined the Coastal Land Trust in 1997 and is responsible for advancing the Land Trust's efforts to protect priority natural, scenic, and or historic areas in the coastal plain of North Carolina. Her interest in the work of the Coastal Land Trust stems from her vast background in wildlife biology and natural resources. Before joining Coastal Land Trust, Janice spent over 10 years working for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in North Carolina and Georgia, and she received her Bachelor of Science degree in Natural Resources from the University of Michigan and a Master's of Science degree in Wildlife Biology from Auburn University. Outside of work, Janice likes hiking and working at the family farm with her husband, Dave, and riding horses with their daughter, Cora. Please welcome Janice. Thank you, Van. Well, good afternoon, everybody. As Van said, I'm going to give you all an insider's view of the Coastal Land Trust's upcoming land conservation projects. Now, as a general rule, we do not provide information on new projects until after they close or are completed, and that's for a variety of reasons. First, we could have various issues or complications that arise during our due diligence which is our survey, our title examination, and or our phase one environmental report that could delay or even stop a closing. And sometimes the landowners or sellers that we're working with would prefer that we not give out information until after closing. And, and sometimes we don't always raise all the money we need to close that project. But today we're gonna bend our rule and you all have been carefully selected to get this special sneak peek at our upcoming projects. So we are poised for a record land conservation year. We estimate between 10 to 12 closings this year. So your coastal land trust is really on fire. Let's take a look. And I'm gonna... So all of the projects that you're gonna hear about meet or exceed our land conservation objectives. And it's important for me to point out that we do not protect everything, but instead we focus on conserving special places. And as a general rule, the ABCs of our land conservation strategy are that we assist others including local and state governments to protect lands that might provide for public recreation and or the conservation of natural areas. We also buffer and or connect existing conservation lands. Sometimes we just buy big, we buy a big tract of land or perhaps we save a smaller tract of land, a standalone place that has special resource values. We're always trying to knock off projects on our top 40 list, which are projects that have met special criteria. And uh, you'll see this little uh, symbol, the top 40 symbol on some of the projects that I'm gonna be talking about. So let's get started and take a look. So the first uh, set of projects here are what I'm calling the home stretchers. 
And these are projects that we have a closing date or we're getting ready to set a closing date. And we've got five of those projects that I'll go over. The first one is the Cape Fear Corbett Tract. And this is a top 40 project in Brunswick County. And it's over a thousand acres, just a vast floodplain forest. This property, which is highlighted in red on this map, is located along the Cape Fear River in Indian Creek, just north of the town of Navassa in Brunswick County. It's just downstream and adjacent to um, a 1300 acre conservation easement that we hold. That property is just downstream and connected to the 2000 acre uh, Rhode Island tract, which is part of the state's Cape Fear River wetlands game lands. So you can see a big corridor here of conservation lands. Now, when I first visited this property, I felt like I was entering into a real life Jurassic Park in which any minute <laughs> a large reptilian creature would burst forth from the deep woods. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that don't get excited about swamps because they feel like they're filled with slithery, toothy, pesky, and unfathomable creatures. I get it. I think it does take a certain perspective to love a swamp, but there's so much to appreciate in a swamp forest. From unusual plants like the Golden Club, you could hear fancy trillers like the prothonotary warbler. You might see big buttress gals like bald cypress or swamp tupelo. Or maybe you'll see a uh, elfin-like tree frog like the green tree frog or a skinny stealth hunter like the great blue heron. And you might even be lucky enough to see one of the exceptionally elusive creatures that haunt the the forest like a bobcat, which you can see in this picture, it's a little bit dark right there. So let's talk about the Cape Fear Corbett Tract. Well, we bought it. We purchased 1,048 acres of floodplain forest on June 24th, just last month. And this includes over five miles of frontage along the Cape Fear River and Indian Creek. This forest is the heart of Dollison Swamp in Brunswick County. And the State Natural Heritage Program has identified this area as being very ecologically significant. And that's because of the age and relatively pristine condition of the forest. This swamp not only provides habitat for wildlife, but it helps retain floodwaters, it helps purify our water, and provides hunting and fishing opportunities. And we were able to acquire this property with grants from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, which is administering the Kerr-McGee Settlement Funds, which in part were due to a Superfund site there in Navassa, and also a grant from Inviva Forest Conservation Fund. Now we're gonna retain ownership of this property and we'll manage it as a nature preserve. Well, the next, project that I'm going to talk about is Hutef Island. And that is another top 40 project. And this is a particular coup for our new executive director, Walker Golder, who has spent years working to conserve this island. And within a few months of coming on board with the Coastal Land Trust, everything came together. So Hutef Island is identified in red on this map. And it's located in Pender County. It's just north of Figure Eight Island in Rich Inlet and just south of Lee Island in Old Topsail Inlet, which is filled in. We're very excited because next week on July 14th, we are gonna close and buy this 1200 plus acre island. This island has over a thousand acres of coastal marsh, and about 170 acres of barrier beach. And it provides habitat for all sorts of rare species. Monarch butterflies will stop over on the island during their migration. We've got an 
a federally threatened plant, sea beach amaranth, that has been documented from this site. This is a, a sand binder plant. We've got sea turtles, piping plovers, red knots, which is another shorebird, diamondback terrapin. And this is a slide that shows piping plovers, actually a banded one. We've got painted bunnings that are occasionally seen in the maritime shrub scrub forest. Every once in a while, a leatherback sea turtle will show up and nest there. This, this amazing gathering of wildlife is what I'm calling a wildlife palooza. This is an amazing island and we're gonna buy it. We'll own it next week, hopefully. And we will retain ownership. We'll manage it as a nature preserve for the amazing wildlife and plants. And we'll partner with the National Audubon Society to monitor and manage the sea turtle and shorebird nesting out there. The next project is the Springer's Point Jones Tract uh, in Hyde County. And this is a top 40 project as well. It's a small tract. It's only 8.63 acres. And it's located right off Loop Road uh, on Ocracoke Island, again in Hyde County. And this property is an inholding to our larger 120 acre Springers Point Preserve, which is open to the public year round. And buying this Jones Tract is very important to our efforts to piece together the Springers Point puzzle. The Springers Point Preserve that we own is highlighted in red on this map. It adjoins a portion of the Cape Hatteras National Seashore. We recently bought these two lots noted in yellow along the Pamlico Sound. Now, if we can close on the Jones Tract, that will bring everything together. And the Jones Tract literally is the first piece of land that you see as you come into our entrance. So you have to go by this tract to get to the rest of our preserve. So it's very critical. Now, many people know that Springer's Point has a rich cultural history. And they know that Blackbeard, the legendary pilot, pirate spent a lot of time on Ocracoke Island and he met his fate at the hands of the English Navy right off this Springer's Point tract at Teach's Hole. And Springer's Point was also the location of the first settlement on Ocracoke Island. Now this Jones Tract, we hope to close on it at the end of this month, if everybody, everything goes smoothly. And the property hosts some maritime forest, including a little bit of tidal red cedar forest. It's got some marsh along Old Slough, which is a tributary of, that flows into the Pamlico Sound. We have documented rare plants, like uh, this Georgia frostweed that's shown here. And you know what? We're planning, if we can get this one closed, we are planning to have a big party celebrating Springer's Point, our ownership uh, for 15 plus years. <laughs> and this will be uh, on May 27th of 2022. So check out our website if you're interested in joining us for that party. Well, the next project is the uh, uh, Waccamaw Corbett Farming Tract in Columbus County. And this is 91 acres located off Dock Road. And it's shown in red on this map. And you can see all around it is this area of orange. That is our, it's almost 2000 acres of land that we own uh, as the Waccamaw Four Preserve. And it's got miles of frontage on the Waccamaw River. We also purchased at the same time, this other little piece uh, just to the Southeast that's in green. Uh, this is about a thousand acres. And we transferred this to the state of North Carolina to be managed by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission as part of the Columbus County game lands. And I wanna point out that this tract, all of our Waccamaw Preserve and the game lands that flow from the Waccamaw River all along Juniper Creek. There is a 29 mile conservation corridor from the Waccamaw along Juniper Creek to the Nature Conservancy's Green Swamp Preserve. So this is an amazing conservation area. And again, buying this 91 acres is important to fill the gap of this preserve and help us preserve more of Gum Swamp, which is a tributary of the Waccamaw. 
Now the next tract that I'll talk about is called the Chowan River FIA tract. And this is another top 40 project. It's 800 acres and it is located up in Bertie and Hertford counties. Now on this map, this FIA tract is located and shown in yellow. And you can see it borders the Bertie County, Hertford County line along the Chowan River. It has a huge portion of Keel Creek that runs through it. And you can see these areas in purple. Those are lands that are owned by the state of North Carolina, managed by the Wildlife Commission um, as the Chowan Swamp Game Lands. Now, I've seen a lot of the Chowan River, and I've actually taken a boat ride from the Virginia state line down the river all the way to where it meets the Albemarle Sound. And I will say this, that this section of the Chowan River at Keel Creek is one of the prettiest places on the river. Now, this FIA tract is part of the Coleraine, Cow Island Swamp and Slopes significant natural heritage area that the state has identified as having very high ecological significance due to the fact that the swamp forest is relatively pristine, it's extensive, and it's old. And there also is some very unusual steep uh, mature hardwood ravines associated with this, this area. The property lies adjacent to the Chowan River aquatic habitat that the state deems of high ecological significance. And this is due to the fact that there's some rare aquatic species in the river there, including the Chowan Oak crayfish. Now, when we buy this property, we're gonna transfer it in fee to the state to become part of the 32,000 acre Chowan Swamp game lands. Now, the next set of projects that I wanna talk about, I'm calling the runners up. These are projects in which we've negotiated the deals, we've got the money in, but we haven't yet started the due diligence and that's the survey and title examination. But we plan to close these by year end and we've got three of these that I'll mention. The first one is the Bryce's Creek Overlook Holdings Tract. This is 105 acres of land along Bryce's Creek and we hope to buy this land on or before November 1st of this year. This property is located in an area of New Bern that is rapidly developing. So it's important that we're buying this land now. And if we're successful in closing on this tract, we are going to transfer this property along with 67 acres we already own along Bryce's Creek, which is right adjacent to it, to Craven County Parks and Recreation, who is going to create a new nature park for New Bern with hiking trails and possibly a canoe access. The next project is the Currituck Sound Lighthouse Tract up in Currituck County. And this one we're partnering with another nonprofit organization, the Outer Banks Conservationists Inc. And this group focuses on protecting uh, significant natural and cultural resources on the Outer Banks. And they own about 11 acres along the Kurotuk Sound near Kerala. And they're going to sell us a conservation easement at a significant bargain sale on this 11 acres. The 11 acres buffers their historic Kurotuk Lighthouse tract with the lighthouse there. It hosts maritime forest. It has some Soundside estuary marsh and a historic boathouse on it. And it lies adjacent to Kerala Park and the historic Whalehead Club, which is owned by Currituck County and open to the public. We're also working with this same nonprofit, the Outer Banks Conservationists Inc., to conserve another property that they own on Roanoke Island, which is in Dare County. And this is a historic farm. And it was once owned and used by the Etheridge family. It's got an old farmhouse on it got a windmill, barn, and other farm structures. And the Outer Banks Conservationists has this open to the public. They give educational tours that highlight what farm life might have been like on the Outer Banks during the mid So this property is near the Fort Raleigh Historic Site and Waterside Theater. 
and they are going to donate a conservation easement on this historic farm to the Coastal Land Trust to make sure that it's protected in perpetuity. So the uh, next set of projects and the final set of projects that I'm gonna talk about are called the hopefuls. These are ones where we've negotiated the deals, but we haven't quite raised all the necessary funds to be able to set up closing. And we've got three of those projects. The first one is called uh, the Chowan River Perry et al. project up in Bertie County. And this is kind of interesting because we actually have five adjoining landowners that have agreed to come together after a partnership, an LLC, to sell portions of the land that they own, totaling 495 acres and one mile of frontage on the Chowan, as one parcel, which is, which is great. And we hope to get our funds together and close this in the summer of 2022. And if we do buy it, we'll transfer this to the state to become part of the Chowan Swamp game lands. And this is actually um, a piece that adjoins existing game lands. The next project is Hoggard's Mill Pond. This is also in Bertie County. And this is one in which we hope to buy 350 acres that lies on both sides of Hoggard's Run, which is a tributary of the Kashai River up in the Roanoke River Basin. Now we're partnering with the town of Windsor on this one, who's very interested in owning this property for a variety of reasons. The property does have historic significance. When the dam was in place, this particular mill pond held water and it actually is believed to be one of the oldest mill ponds in the state. It was, it was built back in 1736. But the property also used to be part of the location of the original Bertie County seat with the courthouse, the jail, and other buildings right there. And they refer to this as the lost town of Cashy. And of course, the courthouse was moved into the town of Windsor, but uh, there is historic significance again at this site. So if we're successful in getting our funds together, we'll buy this tract and we'll transfer it to the town of Windsor to become a brand new nature and historic park that they will open up to the public. And finally, we have our Cape Fear TCI Timber Company tract uh, in Bladen County. And this property consists of seven, 272 acres along about a mile of frontage on the Cape Fear River. And it's just up from the Highway 11 bridge north of Lock and Dam number one. This property has some amazing old swamp forest on it. And it provides great nesting habitat for colonial water birds, like the federally threatened wood stork, as well as some great egrets. And you can see in this photo, some white dots in the forest. And those are either great egrets or wood storks. It also is the only site in North Carolina in documented a swallowtail kite nest. Now these birds are known to nest elsewhere, probably on the Cape Fear and other waterways on the coast, but this is the only place they've actually been documented. They're hard to find the, the nests. If we're successful in raising all the money for this, we'll transfer it to the state to become likely a new state conservation area. So I really appreciate your time in listening to these you know, new projects coming up. And I hope that everyone will come and celebrate with us on our land conservation successes at our next annual meeting, which will be in person on September 25th. It's gonna be at Old Town, um, right on the Cape Fear River. And I think registration is open. So please come out and you know, let's celebrate. And hopefully we'll have a little bit of time here. I'd be happy to answer some, some questions for you. So thank you. Great, thanks Janice. If anyone has any questions, feel free to go ahead and uh, come off mute and you can ask Janice. Hi Janice. Hi. Um, my name is Jonathan Rankin. Uh, I work with uh, NOAA 
out here in Norfolk, the acquisitions and procurement. Uh, I joined with you guys um, uh, about a year ago or so. Um, we own property in Currituck, and we also own property out there in Hertford right off the Chowan. So it was interesting to hear that uh, we have some projects going on so close to the house. Uh, I was curious to know, is there anybody that I could reach out to as far as um, uh, getting familiar with some of the properties, maybe get a tour of, um, I think there's a track. Um, right off of 158 near the Kurtuck Camden County line. Okay. Um, so I was interested in that because we own uh, about 180 acres right off that same creek. Uh, and then secondly, uh, the property right there on the Chowan. Um, is there anybody available or can we set up a meeting or something like that? Is there one? Absolutely. You can call me. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and my contact information um, is on our website, but if you wanted to email me, I'm Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E, at coastallandtrust.org. Outstanding, so I'd outstanding. be happy to talk to you. Um, we don't actually have a boat, but we know people with boats. Um, I have a boat. Oh, there you go. So I can certainly show you around. Um, you know, the Wildlife Commission owns 32,000 acres <laughs> along nine miles of the Chowan. And, of course, you know, the Nature Conservancy helped with that big acquisition that went to the state, a lot of that mm -hmm. land was bought from international paper. Um, so right. it's yeah. a Franklin. lot of protected land. Yeah. And yeah. so I'd be happy to, um, you know, join you and, and Lee Lighty, our attorney, um, also lives up that way. And, and she's also familiar with the area. But between she okay. and I, we'd love to talk to you further about what you have and, and getting out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'll, uh, I'll send you an email and uh, we'll Great. be in touch. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? We're quick, okay. Van. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> we've well, got some chat. I don't know if anybody has got messages in the chat there. Just a lot of praise for the beauty of the Chuan and the amazing set of projects that you guys have lined up. So, um, all right, well, hey, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us, man. This really, this whole, this has really been a lot of fun. Uh, really enjoyed our little lunch lecture series and enjoyed having you guys here today. Uh, not sure when we're going to do this again, and we'll see you again. But keep an eye on your e-news and on social media for upcoming uh, little lunch lectures. Uh, as Janice mentioned, Saturday, September 25th, we will have our annual celebration at Old Town in Brunswick County. Hope you can join us for that. And if you're a golfer, on October the 11th, we're going to have the 19th annual Holt Golf Tournament uh, at the Country Club of Landfall here in Wilmington, and you can sign up online for that as well. So on behalf of uh, all our staff here and everybody at the Coastal Land Trust, we want to thank you guys for joining us and uh, hope to see you soon. Have a hey, great weekend. Hey, Van, I don't know if there was one question that came up in chat here. No, nope, that's uh, those are our the links for folks to check out and see uh, if they want to support okay. the land trust or if they want to find right. the past lectures. They're all on the website. All right, all right. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.